Hi guys, welcome back to Metabox Tutorials. Today, we are going to create a detailed page for products and their variations. Here is my example. Each of the variations is a color of the product. When you choose a color, it will get the corresponding image gallery. When you choose another one, it will get a different gallery. At the same time, other information of that variation will automatically come up. In the previous part of this series, we created one using Metabox and Gutenberg so you can refer to it where I put the link in the description. But now I'm going to create the same one with Metabox and Oxygen. First, we need Metabox Core plugin. I already installed it to have a framework to create custom fields. It's free on WordPress.org. And, Metabox AIO, which is available when you have a license of Ultimate Plan or Lifetime Plan, or Developer Bundle. Go to this menu to see all of the Metabox's extensions. If you don't have it, you can install individual extensions. In this tutorial, we need MB custom post type and custom taxonomies to create custom post types. And, Metabox Builder to have a UI in the back end to create custom fields easily. Metabox Conditional Logic lets you show fields precisely as any rules you want. Metabox Group helps you organize custom fields into repeatable and collapsible groups. Make sure you've enabled them already. The last one is Oxygen. You should use the 3.9 version or upper, which has the native integration with Metabox. Let's create a new post type for products. Now, a new menu named Online Shops appears. It's the new post type one created. To have spaces for product information, we need custom fields. Metabox has more than 50 field types, so you can choose any type of field you want to have additional information for your products. We already have a video to talk about each type of field, so you can learn about each one in detail. As you all know, some products may not have any variation. So, we need a field to choose when it has one. Here is a switch field with on and off options and we will set this field to be a yes no question. So I change the label of the on and off options to yes and no. When it is no, means that the product has no variation and is a simple product. For a simple product, we have some basic information that we put in a group with subfields inside. Since this group of fields shows up only when the product is simple, we need to go to the advanced tab of the group to set a conditional logic rule. This is the ID of the switch field. And, set this as zero. It's the value of the no option in the switch field. This means that the group will display only when the switch field is chosen as no. If the product has any variation, we will have another group of fields for the variation's information. However, the information of variation almost is the same with a simple product, so I duplicate this group for saving time. Then change the labels and IDs of fields. In most cases, we will have more than one variation, so I set this group as clonable to have more spaces to fill in information for variations. Oh, I almost forgot an important thing that, each variation is a color of the product. So, we need a color field here. To make it easy, I set it as a select field with options as we can see here. This group will show up when the switch field is chosen as yes, so we change the value in this condition to 1. It's the value of the yes option in the switch field. We've done all the custom fields for products as well as the variation. So now, go to the settings tab and choose the location as the post type of the products that we've just created to apply the custom fields to it. Back to the post editor. You will see all of the created custom fields. This button is no in default, so if the product has no variation, don't touch it. The product is simple type now, so we cannot clone these fields. If the product has variations, slide this to yes, and, another group of fields will be shown like this. You can click add more to add variations. Now I will create a template with Oxygen. First, I choose Innovate Default Page to inherit the template that I created. Next, 
go to the singular section and select online shops. It allows you to apply this template to any post in this post type. Now, in the post editor, you will see this section. It means that this post will be rendered using my new template. Go to the edit with oxygen to edit the template. Now, we'll add a section component in this position for having a container. In there, add code block. Since the product variations have a lot of information along with advanced conditions to display, we need code for almost. In case you want to use MB views from Metabox, please go to the previous tutorial in this series. Now, move to PHP and HTML and add code here. We'll use this function to get value from the custom fields created by Metabox. It will be used throughout this practice. I created a variable here to get the value from the switch field. This is the ID of the field, you should change it to the ID of your field when applying. The switch field has two default values which are 1 and 0. They stand for the option yes and no. If the product has no variation, this field will be set no. It means that this variable will obtain the zero value. In this case, the value of fields from the simple product group will be loaded and displayed. I'll create a slider with a large image frame above and a section for displaying image thumbnails. So, this code is to display images in both large and thumbnail size. Since the simple product is a group, this function will return values in an array with all the values from the subfields. I create a variable here to pick up from that array the value of the field with ID as product images only. Then use a loop to display all the images. This function is to get the URLs of them. And this line is to display images in large size from those URLs. Do likewise to display them in thumbnail size in these lines. This code is to display the product name and its description. The promotional price and original price also are the subfields of the simple product group, so we use this to pick up values of those fields from the array of this variable. These are the ID of the price fields. This line means that if it has any promotional price, both of these prices will be displayed. Otherwise, if there is no promotional price, only the value from the original price will be obtained and displayed. Next this code shows the value of the size field. And this one is to display the status of the product. Because status is a select field with two options, and I want to display the label of the option here instead of value, so I use this code. If you want to get the value, refer to the way I used for the size field. That's all for the simple product. In the case there are variations, we will get value from the subfields in the variations of the product group. For variations, we have the same logic of getting field values as the simple product, but have some differences in syntax because they are in a clonable group. We need to use loops to get each subfield's value in this case. For example, I also get images for the product gallery here, but before getting value, I have a loop as you can see here. Whenever I get value from a subfield, I have a loop first. For the title and content field, there is no loop because they are outside of the group. Besides that, we differentiate variations by color so we also have it here. There is a special point that I added in a tag here. I'll explain about it later. Now, go to a product page. All the product information is displayed here already. It is so messy now. To make it more beautiful with a better layout, we'll need some JS and CSS. But, before doing that, we need to add some div tags to divide elements into sections. I replaced the code in the code block with the new one including div tags. All the code is uploaded into GitHub, you can refer to it for more details. Let's go back to the place where we input the color information. Along with the a tag, I added a dynamic class based on the name of the color. For each color, it will generate a separate one. This class plays an important role in helping us to define which variations are showing. I also added an attribute in the price section. This attribute will obtain the name of the corresponding color, then we'll know which prices are of which variation. I also have this attribute for size, status, as well as image gallery, so that we can easily choose which information should be shown to fit the chosen color. Back to the detailed product page. All the elements were just reordered. 
Now, move to the next step. As you see at the beginning of this video, the images of the product variations are in a slider, and the information of each variation appears only when you choose the matching color. To have it, I use some JS and CSS. But instead of adding them directly to the theme, I'm using my custom functionality plugin, so when I change the theme, it won't be affected. This plugin can be downloaded from GitHub and installed on your website. And, for the JS and CSS, I use the Slick library. It's also available on GitHub. It includes several files as you can see here, but, we just need three of them. Go to the folder of the My Custom Functionality plugin, upload them into the corresponding JS and CSS folders. Next, to set a rule that stipulates for displaying the information of each variation, I'll create a custom JS file in the JS folder. In this code, I also set a slider for the image gallery. This is used to create a slider for the elements that have this class. They are product images which I set to display in the large size. And, this is to create a slider as well. The elements which have this class are product images which I set to display in the thumbnail size. We will call this slider as thumbnail slider. And the previous one for large images will be called as large slider to differentiate them easier. This code is to identify which thumbnail is in the current slide. And that thumbnail will be added a class as is active. This code is to trigger the event that someone clicks on the large image to move to the other one, then the thumbnail slider will be changed to the corresponding thumbnail. Otherwise, when someone clicks on the thumbnail slider, this code will trigger that event. Then, it also displays the corresponding large image in the large slider. Move to the next lines of code, this one will trigger when someone clicks on a product color using the A tag we added in the view, do you remember it? Then, do the following actions at once. This is to remove the active class from the unselected color and add it to the selected one. This is to remove and add the active class to all the elements that have value of the data ID attribute as the name of the color. It means that when you click on a color, all the corresponding information of that variation such as price, size, status, and image gallery will be displayed. And this is to refresh both sliders to load new images. These codes are to know which size is being chosen. That's all for the code in the custom JS file. You can refer to it on GitHub that I put the link in this video description as well as the post on our blog. Now. Declare all the JS and CSS files that we have just uploaded and created. Do it by adding code to the plugin PHP file. And, inside this function. Now, the product images have already turned into a slider but we cannot see all the information of each variation in the right place. Let's go ahead to style this page. Back to page editor by Oxygen, in the manage section, choose add style sheet to have space for you to add CSS. Here is all the code that I uploaded on GitHub, so you can refer to it. Go to the product detail page now. Look, it displays beautifully. When you choose a color, the photo gallery will automatically change according to that color. At the same time, the sizes and prices also change correspondingly. The slider also had a beautiful look. So my JS code is already working well. That's the end of today's tutorial. Remember to like, share, and subscribe us for more tutorials. Bye.